I can't. I, I just can't deny how I feel. I, I say I feel decades younger. The uh, no more bloating. I mean, you've seen probably some of my previous pictures. My yeah. face was like a bowling ball. I say no medications at all. I, I even was on like uh, levothyroxine for a while, and uh, I came off of that. So my body is probably in a better state than it's been for thirty years in terms of no medications, activity levels, and energy. I don't get halitosis anymore. I don't know if people talk about that, but I used to suffer with gum bleeding. And again, people said to me, oh, it's gingivitis, it runs in the family. Well, it doesn't now. It's no. Yeah. No, it's crazy. All right, all right, all right. Carnivore Soldier coming at you from Austin, Texas. Today, we've got another interview with another UK carnivore. This is for the podcast, The Carnivore Way, and where we interview YouTube content creators for the carnivore lifestyle and discuss all things carnivore with them. So I'm going to bring in my mate, Alex here. How's it going, Alex? It's going absolutely great, Larry. Thanks very much. All right. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to drop these little banners in with questions. So let's start off with you just introducing yourself. Why don't you tell the, the fans out there who you are, what you're about, and how long you've been carnivore, that kind of stuff. Okay, great. So, yeah, my name's Alex. I'm from Liverpool in the UK. I'm age 65. I'm in my 66th year in <laughs> 2024. <laughs> Celebrate my 66th birthday in August this year, and I'll be receiving my official UK pension. So that's uh, something to look forward to. I've been married to Michelle, my wife, my rock. Um, behind every guy, there's a very strong woman, I think. She's just amazing to me. Uh, we've been together 40 years this year, 40 years, crazy in July. And we've been married for 34 years this coming September. So really proud of that. We've got two grown up kids. Sophie's 31. She's married to Andy. He's a police officer, really fantastic couple. I'm so happy for them. They've been together 10 years. They are both carnivore. Alex Jr. He's 22. He's at home still. I can't kick him out yet. Can't kick him off out the nest. He, I'm proud of him. We had struggles a couple of years ago in college. He just didn't know a direction. And when I told him that even when I retired at 50, 15 years ago, I still didn't know what I wanted to do in life. That made him realize that he didn't have to go to university. He didn't have that pressure. And he found his way in uh, the retail sector in the UK. He's now at 22, a store manager for a top, it's not a flagship store, but it's a, a big store in Liverpool. It's a global retail brand, and he's the manager, and he's 22. I just could never have done that when I was his age. So I'm really proud of my kids and obviously my wife. I retired in 2008. I'd been working from 1975 in the civil service in the UK and local governments. It wasn't a sedentary lifetime, a, a, lifetime, a lifestyle, but I did travel around the country doing property valuations for people on welfare benefits. So it was like a, it was called a senior executive officer. It was just a title, but it was a really enjoyable job. But as I got into my middle, you know, 20, 20, 2005, it got really stressful. Now I've got opportunity to take retirement. When you're 50 and you take retirement, I don't know about you, Pat Laddie, but I just felt cognitive dissonance. I was joyous. I was ex exhilarated, but suddenly I didn't have a vehicle and uh, I just didn't know what to do. So that was one of the crucial times in my life where things were going great because I lost the stress from the job. But also I started going down the path of drinking too much alcohol, uh, eating too much crap food, starting to feel sorry for myself. Uh, but fortunately, within the first 12 months, I uh, volunteered to become a swim teacher because Sophie was such a fantastic competitive swimmer. And then for the last 15 years, I've been a, some people say I'm a top coach and swim teacher. I've worked with all the uh, top, UK swimmers, Rebecca Adlington, Steve Parry, who runs a, a major was it, swimming franchise in the UK. I was a coordinator and events manager for them. I absolutely loved it. Lockdowns came along, destroyed everything, took away all yeah. myself and took away my self-esteem and my employment and Michelle's. But you know what? I got it back and uh, I'm thriving. I'm having the best time of my life. Life changed again in April 2022 when I came across a YouTube video about fat and what it's all about and what it's not all about. And so I became a carnivore on the 1st of May, 2022. <laughs> and that's, that's awesome, it for now. man. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I retired my 50s too. 2019, I retired from the, yeah. the Texas Army National Guard as a chief warrant officer. And I was the network engineer for the division, the net ops chief, basically, and uh, which is network operations. Mm. And I was 53. Yeah, so wow. I was young. 
And yeah. so I started a company doing inspections on real estate, which I did, and I still own that company. I just don't do as many as I used to. No. And then I uh, got recruited by a university to be a wireless network architect, which is what my forte was from the army. I was a network engineer. Mm -hmm. So now I have that purpose going, but I tell you what, it was still a downhill slope on my health and my mental health. Once yeah. I retired, I was still not, I couldn't run anymore. I wasn't going to the gym. I really rarely got off the couch unless I had to do something. I hated mm -hmm. doing chores. And when I found carnivore, all that changed. It was a life-changing event for me. So yes, yeah, same with you, man. Same deal. And uh, the pandemic, the lockdown, that had a lot to do with stuff that mental and physical too. It, it accelerated things for me in the wrong direction. I became a carnivore March 22nd of 2023. So I'm behind you, but by about a year. Okay, uh, let's jump in. So what prompted you to start it? Like, what did you see? Was there, a, what was your aha moment, your epiphany? Did you see a video? Did you talk to somebody? Was it Joe Rogan? Who was it? Who turned you on to this thing? Well, you documented the epiphany. It was almost like a eureka moment. I found it uh, inadvertently, really. I was just on YouTube. When you are, I'm semi-retired as a swim teacher, so I only do about 12 to 20 hours a week. I haven't watched mainstream media for about 10 years. I just got sick and tired of it go down rabbit holes, come back up them. And YouTube, it's got everything. It's got the, it's like the internet, isn't it? It's got the worst of everything and the best. You've just got to be a good researcher uh, in your own right. And I remember sitting in the next room in the conservatory or uh, like a porch extension you guys have. I was watching TV, fiction, the documentary came on. And because I was the chef in the house, uh, Mediterranean diet, 80, 20, 80% plant-based, 20% lean meat no fatty meats. I was interested in this. And I, I followed the channel called Young Man Cooking. It's a guy from Hong Kong, phenomenal uh, plant-based diet, but whole foods, none of your junk, not spinach trying to look like a burger. It was all healthy stuff. But I was 203 pounds in weight. When I was in my twenties, I was about 145 pounds. And so I was drinking too much, eating all, lots of toxins. And I just watched this uh, video and I thought, about an hour and a half, I went, I'll play that again. I'll play that again. So it wasn't one particular person. It was just my brain went, you're doing something wrong here, or you've been doing something wrong for at least 50 years. So I played it again. And the interesting thing was they were normal, ordinary people like those guys. They weren't, they weren't, hey, look at this great product, you know, buy it today and it'll be rubbish tomorrow. It, it was real. I can't remember the guys who were the doctors, but again, I just connected to them. I think I played it three times that day. Um, <laughs> well, so wait, me. When, you, when you talk about them being normal people, you mean those three people that put the glucose monitors on yeah, and ate the yeah. two different weekly meals, right? Yes, that's it. So okay. you, you watched it yourself. I think you reviewed it. Oh, of course. It I did a channel. review on it. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, obviously, the algorithms kick in, don't they? I didn't even know what algorithms were then. And <laughs> Fat Fiction, so Fat the Movie came up, I think Fat 2. Dr. Sean Baker, and I remember sitting there going, who's this guy? And he's like this, isn't he? Well, he's... <laughs> and it, it, it was just the fact that he was walking through the uh, grounds of his house. And I thought, well, that looks like a doctor's house. It's massive. It's in the States. And then he's walking and walking, and he starts talking about the diet. And I was thinking, wow, he's going to die of a heart attack. All the things that <laughs> all the things that, that we react to indoctrinations, which I'm not saying it was a bad thing. That's just the way my life was. But I couldn't believe he had a cap on, baseball cap on. He was, I think, sort of American sports. And so I watched the whole video, and obviously, over a couple of days, Dr. Ken Berry turned up. So I went into Michelle and I went, Hey, babe, we didn't like sugar anyway. I knew it wasn't a, a good thing to eat, but I like my sweet stuff, I like my savory stuff. But our children never had sugar uh, knowingly in their food, they've never had a cavity ever. And the 34 and 22. When I was there, uh, about eight or nine, I had about nine uh, fillings in my house because my mum, she killed me with kindness. But I remember saying to Michelle, let's go into the kitchen where I am today. So those cupboards behind me, uh, I opened every single one. I knew where everything was. I would pick up a tin and go, fifth ingredient, this is sugar. And I, so I started going on a bit of a detective thing. And I thought, right, I'm going to find some products here that haven't got sugar. I'm going to show Michelle. And I think this is not an exaggeration. 95% of all the tin uh, stuff, the boxes, the pouches, the frozen stuff in the freezer, sugar appeared either as maltodextrin or saccharin or whatever it was, because about 70 different names of sugar. 
and I started to get really angry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not, not angry, but angry. And I was thinking, I'm a sucker here. I'm, I'm starting to realize that somebody's played a game on me. So she sat, I don't think she sat down with me, but I explained to her what I was going to do. And she's my girl. She said, I'll support you. Let's see what we're going to do. So we took everything out of the pantry, out of the, the cupboards, out of the freezer, threw away any perishable stuff and gave all the stuff that wouldn't perish to Michelle's mum. <laughs> <laughs> so we took it down, gave all the food away. And I start, so I thought to myself, right, let's go to the local supermarkets. The meat wasn't that great, but luckily for me, I'd already started going to a butcher's called Stanton's about half a mile away. And uh, I walked in there said, listen, guys, I've started this diet. Didn't tell them what it was, but then I started going there every week and they suddenly realized this guy's serious about this. So slightly from that, I started watching Dante from Ferrigno Freedom. It's day one to 125. I'm sitting there getting more and more intrigued, realizing these people are in this younger than me, but they're not like uh, 20s and 30s. They're close to my age. And I was at the point probably at in 2022 where I was starting to feel as if I was going really downhill. 65 is coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be a pensioner. It was all a mental situation following the lockdowns as well. Just quickly on that, I said to uh, Kerry from Homestead how I was mentally depressed, but I didn't realize it. I was in that fog. And here's why I, I realized there wasn't it with, with the hindsight. I've lost control of my life. Most men, I'm sure, I've heard an expression before, men, most men live lives of quiet desperation. Yep. And I think I was at that point where I was thinking, I didn't realize it, but suddenly an awareness, it's out of control and I'm losing it. So I went into a really bad place just before I found fact fiction. And when that came along, it was like, as I said, an epiphany moment. I then went on to uh, Dante, uh, Dave Mack. Uh, again, again, Dave's got so many issues, which he, which he's documented fully. And I was like, this is making me feel so much more confident about what I'm going to do. And then I saw Amanda from Carnivorous Me. And, um, I've said, I've said to Amanda personally, when I, when I spoke to her on the 24 hour live stream, I had tears coming down my, my face, watching her have the guts, the courage to sit there in front of a screen and show the world how she was struggling with her. Her obesity, I mean, she, I can't remember what a, a poundage was or a pound weight, but I just sat there. You know, when you get that, that gut feeling, as we kind of always do, I went, this lady's going to do this. So obviously I subbed to her channel and yeah. uh, Dave. And then that's where my starting point was. It was Chafee, Dr. Kiltz, all different characters. Dr. Ken Berry was the one who gave me my main library of uh, videos. So I just battered the videos as eight hours a day totally obsessive OCD on carnivore. And then after the first month, I'd lost nearly a stone in weight or sorry, 14 pounds, 14, pounds years, yeah. 14 pounds. So that was my fantastic start. It wasn't so much a person who got me into carnivore. It was the YouTube algorithms and me having the guts to follow through on that documentary. And that's why it's so important for people to like and subscribe to videos because yeah. it went, once, it, once you do subscribe to someone, if their video pops up, you yeah. need to watch it right away because in the first hour is like a golden hour. The algorithm determines what it's going to do with the video based on what subscribers do. So if subscribers ignore it, yeah. it's probably not going to get put up. If subscribers jump on it and leave a comment and watch it all the way through, it's probably going to yeah. get shared out. And that'll save someone else's life. You don't yeah. necessarily have to be a YouTube content creator. You can just be in the fight by watching and supporting your YouTube content creators. So if you are sitting at home, if you do have time, and you see a content creator publish something, jump mm -hmm. on it if you're supporting yeah. if you support their message yeah i agree man that's really good stuff and uh, that's kind of what i did too mine was dante fregno the first video i saw when i was looking for jeep parts <laughs> and i thought well i was like looking to put a jeep part on my jeep and i saw them like man that can't be real and then i watched it all like okay that was real but it can't still be here like so then it looked you know this is years later he can't still look like that and i was right he did look like that he looks better now i wow. went and looked i was like oh my gosh the guy's still on it and now we're friends. Now he's been on my, my live streams and we've done interviews. He's a great guy. And uh, but I felt like I kind of knew him. Like you said before, when you're a carnivore, you feel like you kind of know people because they're laying out their heart on the line and they're talking yeah. and you kind of know who they are. Larry, I just, uh, as I say, it's a gut instinct. I haven't come across a, a carnivore that I haven't liked so far. Yeah. So they, they come across so empathetic, very patient, very reasonable people and uh, balanced, very balanced. Incredible. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. 
All right, let's jump into uh, what are the physical and mental effects? You can list some of the things that have changed in you that you've noticed. On yeah, yeah. And for yeah. you and your family, if your family's doing it. So you said your son or your son-in-law and your daughter are, right? That's right, yeah. yeah and you okay. are. Yeah, we'll start off with them. Um, Sophie uh, will obviously watch this on replay. In fact, she was around today. She'd gone shopping with her mom. And I said, how do you fancy uh, an interview on StreamYard? No, no, not yet, Dad. So I thought, okay, we're 10% in, but Sophie has struggled with her weight and she's on her dad's side. I, my metabolism slowed, I'm sure, over the years, but she, Sophie has got a sweet tooth all through her 20s. I'd say she was a very competitive swimmer, but she struggled with her weight over the last 10 years. And I think she'd agree with me that it's through comfort eating and a bit of complacency and being addicted to sugar. We're, we're, most of us are sugarholics. But again, I think... Looking back, she didn't have a big enough challenge or why, as we always talk about, the WHY, yeah. to change. And Andy's the same. And they both did CrossFit. You've heard of CrossFit. Yeah. yeah. I used to CrossFit when I was in the Army. Yeah. Yeah. She, they both used to uh, deadlift. She's just phenomenal. But I think she got to the point where she was thinking, I want to settle down. She's been married now, I think it's nearly three years. And obviously, she wants children. And again, I don't think she'll mind me saying, I hope she doesn't give me that. But a doctor or her gynecologist said, so you need to lose weight. And she's discussed saying, whatever I'm eating is not working. My, my weight regime's not working. She's a gym fanatic, doesn't swim like she used to. But like me, when she realized that I lost, I went from, I say 203 to about 165 yeah. in eight months, in the first eight months. And she said to me, how many times have you been in the gym that? And I went, you're not going to believe this, not once. And I do work at a leisure center where I get free membership. But I was so busy with everything else. I said to Michelle, all this subcutaneous fat's gone and I haven't lifted one weight, which I've gone back to. So our Sophie's not stupid. She went, right, dad's doing something which he's never been able to do, which is change direction and yep. get so many benefits. So I started talking to her about what I was doing and she said, dad, I'm going to do this. Now, this was about... Four months ago, she uh, yo-yoed, as we always do. We all of us roller coaster. We get off the wagon, we get off the horse, but she got back on it and she came around today and I could see that carnival glow in her eyes. And Larry, I, I wish she was sitting next to me because <laughs> you would sense it because she's found, she, she's now fat adapted, definitely. So is Andy. And because they're supporting each other, uh, they both got really stressful jobs. As I say, Andy's a, a police officer. We do turn to food, don't we? Or drugs or whatever it is to reassure ourselves or, or soften the blow but now she knows that that's not the thing to do she's got to change her nutrition journey and so getting back to what I was, what you were saying Sophie is on a fantastic journey Alex is 22 when I was 22 as you say if I'd have heard about this I'd have gone nah I haven't yeah. seen much of a good time you know what I mean it's going to get in the way but he has cut out as much crap as possible and I will speak for him now. He's calmer. He's, he's got a stressful job as a manager of a large store at 22. He handles it like a pro. And so it definitely does filter into the family. Michelle's not a uh, carnivore. She does unintentional keto bore, no rubbish. That's the point with Michelle. And she's great. She can have a half a glass of wine. She can put that down. No problem at all. I will go to the first bottle and I'll start. But I used to be like this, you know, let's have another one. And again, it was reward based. It was all stress busting. It was yeah. nothing to do with the wine. It was what the wine was doing to me initially, but it's the after effects. It stimulates you, but then it becomes a depressant. So again, this is why I think carnivore is helping me so much because it's making me, I don't know, really face my final hurdle, which is uh, alcohol consumption. Where I'm from in Liverpool, there's a strong mm -hmm. drink culture like many places in the world. Yeah. And I remember coming, all my family, all my friends in Garston, which is a, a dock area of, Garston, of Liverpool, South Liverpool, it was in the 50s, 60s and 70s, it was thriving. It was a very good area, lots of docks, lots of businesses up and down, but there was a pull on every corner. And the people in that area worked hard, but they played hard and they drank hard as well. And that sort of like just filtered through to me. I started drinking when I was 16. And so I've had plenty of practice <laughs> right yeah. into the 60s. But this diet and this mental awareness has really made me focus on that's the challenge that i've got to overcome and so far it's been successful i don't think it'll ever be an end but i, I say compared to how it was two years ago 
it's just phenomenal. So the physical side of it, I've lost all my medical issues. I've lost the psoriasis, which I had on my neck, elbows. That was just purely through stress. It's in the family. No more acid reflux. I was on omeprazole, BP tablets. I was on three medications, Sartan, Lysinopril. And again, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? My doctor said to me 20 years ago, I wasn't big at the time, but my BP was obviously high. I, was, I had a slight arrhythmia. He said, you'll be on these for life, Alex. Now, even then I would challenge things. And I said, well, why? And he goes, well, unless you lose a considerable amount of weight and get yourself fit, it's not going to happen. Here's a diet sheet. And that was the last time we spoke about blood pressure. And the wow. diet sheet was high carb, low fat. So no wonder things never changed. I say in those, in the 20 months so far, I'd already given up one tablet about three or four years ago, so I was determined to get rid of them. But as I say, about eight months ago, I just gave up completely. I use a, a really good quality EP sleeve. And uh, my blood pressure is amazing, especially when you look at something like Dr. Berry, who talks about what blood pressure really should be. I can't, I, I just can't deny how I feel. I, I say I feel decades younger. The uh, normal bloating, I mean, you've seen probably some of my previous pictures. My yeah. face was like a bowling ball. I say no medications at all. I even was on like uh, level thyroxine for a while and uh, I came off of that. So my body is probably in a better state than it's been for 30 years in terms of no medications, activity levels and energy. I don't get halitosis anymore. I don't know if people talk about that, but I used to suffer with gum bleeding. And again, people said to me, oh, it's gingivitis, it runs in the family. Well, it doesn't now. It's no. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. My memory's improved. I'm doing two languages at the moment. I tried Chinese, but Mandarin, that's so hard. It's really hard because it's not, it's not actual alphabet. It's tones. It's not it? a Western language. Yeah. Not wow. a romantic so language. It's yeah. incredible. I mean, I, I try and speak, say like Ni Hao and stuff like that. Because we've got a lot of Hong Kong Chinese swimmers in my groups uh, and they are British Hong Kong. And they're like, why are you talking like that? Even though they know what I'm saying, they go, guys, I want to bounce it off you because I really want to try and develop my hair. And they're like, nah, nah, just, and they've got like Liverpool accents like me. So that is quite amusing. Little things like skin tags, which I thought is an age thing. They all went, my family, yep. all, my, my granddad used to have skin tags around their eyes. I've got a prosthetic right knee. I was replaced in when I was 50 because of osteoarthritis. And again, I think with the hindsight, that was a pity. It got me down having to have a prosthetic limb of sorts ripe old age of 50 and that slowed me down as well but today i forget i've got a knee replacement it's crazy i can even squat yeah. back even further than i could i can do breaststroke again which i couldn't do because of obviously that lateral rotation and again it has to be the carnivore diet or my map my, my nutrition change because i couldn't do these things like two three four years ago it's just insane and so they're the main things one other thing as well i think i had IBS about 2015. I had a ventral hernia in 2016. I was diagnosed with diverticulitis. Again, because it was such a high grain, high carb diet. I was given a diet sheet when I had the diagnosis. And again, all it said was it uh, high carbs, low fat. So that was just making things even worse. And then I actually uh, had to have my abs reconstructed in 2017 because I split them. And again, I know that was all to do with the catalog of the IBS and diverticulitis. I can never prove it, never had it medically diagnosed, but I think back to myself, why on earth did all those things happen? I wasn't, I'm not a drug addict. My alcohol was um, manageable. What was going on in my life, which made it, and I get, as I say, I have to look at myself and say, it was my diet, sadly. Yeah, and going back to what you said about your daughter and not having the why. Yeah. I don't know if you saw my recent video about how not to fail. I just did a video on that, no, on how not no. to fail. So anyway, I, I talk about developing the why. And one of the things I compare it to is uh, the reason people won't do I, I give a couple of reasons people won't will fall off the diet. One is mm -hmm. because every diet they've done to this point has failed. Yeah. So they believe this will fail in the back of their head. They've never seen a success in their life. They never have. Mm -hmm. So not sustainable anyway. So they go into this thinking that the vehicle is flawed, right? That's what they're thinking. But the reality is the vehicle is not flawed. And I challenge him. I said, listen, if we were to get in, a, if, Alex, if you were to get in a contract, I got in contract with your daughter today. And we opened an escrow account. I put $25,000 in there and said, at the end of 31 days, if you do not stray from the carnivore diet, you get $25,000. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think she'd have a problem? Do she no. be tempted? She'd go to Thanksgiving. She'd go to Christmas. She could have candy in her office all day long. And guess what? She got twenty five thousand dollars waiting there because she trusts that. She Absolutely. trusts my check in an escrow, right? <laughs> but what she doesn't trust is the diet. Because if she did yeah. the same trust in the diet, you couldn't pay me twenty five thousand dollars now to leave this. I tell you that right now. And uh, that, so I just threw that out in a video because I think that's a, an important point that people come into this and then they bring in. The other thing is when they do come into the diet, they bring in failure patterns. Mm -hmm. Like what can I eat X, Y, or Z knowing full well, it's not animal based. Can I have a cheat day? How do you feel about me doing this? And they throw that out there because they want people to confirm that they're okay doing it. Yeah. But really those are patterns that failed in the past. So I would say, mm -hmm. This is a vehicle that works. Don't bring in failure patterns and hit it hard for 31 days and see what happens. Then make your decision. Yeah. Make a deal with yourself. Put a $25,000 check in your escrow with yourself and go forward and do it like, it, and then that's what I did. I'm sure that's what you did. I, when I went in, I said, I'm going to be like Cortez. I'm going to burn the ships. Yeah. I'm going to be like Napoleon. If you want to take Vienna, take Vienna. I'm not going to yeah. halfway do this thing. And if it doesn't work, it's because it's flawed. Not because I yeah. didn't put maximum effort. So I'm a maximum yeah. effort guy. So that, and it, of course it did work just like you did, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I did a video uh, big Christmas, uh, but I think it was more of a review video. And, uh, I remember that, I, I don't know if it was Einstein who did the quote, but it was, uh, if you keep doing the same thing yeah. over and over and over again, and expecting different results, you, you, that, that's, that's the definition of insanity. And I think on that video, I did say to people, I must've been insane for years. And I was yeah. speaking on behalf of the masses as well, especially myself. And that's how I've gone through life. When things work, okay, it's great. But I never used to even tell people about those successes. But when things don't work and you keep on doing the same thing, we've got family and friends like who have actually gone on official diets, go to clubs and everything and sign up. And bet your bottom dollar every time, I won't mention names, every time they come away from that. And you know, they've, they've done well and you get lots of plaudits. Three months later, you keep and you go oh so you're going to go back into that club are you and they go yeah 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 because they've had yeah. their little cheats and the thing is it's like you don't have to remind people they're not people not stupid that was the thing that got you into the mess in the first place yeah. so as you say if you don't burn your boats you're just going to keep going back and going back and going back and with that twenty five thousand esco if it was two and a half million i know it sounds that money is not my main driving force it it makes things easier for me but it's not my driving force at my age. I would actually say to you, there you go, guys, I'm staying on carnival. Because, yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. One thing I didn't touch on, on on your question, which I should have done was the mental aspect or the mental effects are, they're the main driver for me nowadays. Now that I've looked back over the 20 months, people do say to me, Alex, you've got your mojo back. You have got that right. energy, your behavior, your positivity. I've always been a you know glass half full guy. The mental effects, obviously, of the pandemic, uh, I think about how this affected people all over the world. If you haven't got an outlet or a vehicle or you haven't got fantastic support, man, it must be the worst thing in the world. And but as I say, the timing of that fact fiction movie was a blessing from somewhere. And uh, my mental state today is sharp. I'm sharper than I've been when I've said to Sophie, because Sophie's 31. And I said, I was 34 when you were born, so, and I can actually remember whole days of how I felt. I was like skipping along. I'm a dad. I've, I've got a wonderful wife. I've got a beautiful house. I've got a really good job, even though it's stressful. Halcyon days for me. And it's, uh, I, I feel now as if I've, I've actually gone back in time and brought that guy forward like 30 odd years. And again, another video I did recently, I found a stock video and it was about a guy climbing up the hill. Now I used to see myself sliding down it fast, but now that's where I am. Now. I'm climbing that carnivore hill and it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Yep. And on the standard diet, we were more like Sisyphus, right? Pushing the rock up the, up the yeah. hill and getting crushed yeah. by it every day, Yeah, every yeah. day. And it, yeah. yeah, I actually used that quote and it is Einstein that said that in that video yeah. I, at the end, I'm like, if you keep doing the same thing and expect different results, that is the definition of insanity. And that was yeah. Einstein that said that. Yeah. But yeah, you couldn't pay me 25 grand no. or any money to go back because like you said, I actually feel like more of a man now again. I feel like I've regained yes. my manhood because yeah. I feel very confident in everything I do now, everything. Yeah. And that, yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. So that's great, man. So let's talk about 
being a father and a husband, how has carnivore affected that? I know we talk about being a man, but how do you think that that's changed or affected you being a father and a husband? I think, well, talking about being a man, I mean, that's old fashioned, Larry, but you know what? I, some, some people are, shall we say, who are woke won't like that, but I am old fashioned, mate. I think we should yep. bring old fashioned back. And what you're saying, this is why I think we get on so well. You talk my language and that's how I feel. I feel like I'm a man again. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I remember watching, I think it was the Hobbit series and the King. I don't know whether it was in, was it? Uh, I don't know if it was the actual Hobbit or the other ones where the King, he's in this castle and he's gone and he wakes up one day and he suddenly becomes the King again. I, I haven't seen these DVDs for years. I, I need to get them out. And I thought to myself, that's how it feels. I feel as if you're, again, be careful what you say. I'm top of the class. I'm king of my castle. I'm the head of the household. I'm seven years older than Michelle, but uh, she looks to me for advice. I look to, for her for advice and support. But I do feel like a good old fashioned bloke again. It's just incredible. Yeah. Sophie, I think she, they quietly say things to me, Dad, how's it going? What have you had today? And but they, there's never been one negative comment in the whole 20 months from my family, which I did expect because I was the chef, I was the cook. I have to say thank you to them for uh, this is online, the fact that they've supported me so much. Also, uh, a New Year's resolution of mine was to start cooking again for them, even if I'm going to eat at a separate time. Let, let's get back to the old ways. Instead of somebody coming in saying, hey, dad, what's for tea? Or I've had a ribeye. That doesn't work. You know, that's not family to me. You've got to be the head of the household as well as Michelle. And you've got to say to people like, we're going to eat together. We're all sitting down together. We're going to talk about what our day's been like, what we're going to do tomorrow. This is your meal. This is my meal. And we're both going to be happy. So, yeah, I think it take, if anyone's starting carnivore today, it will probably create a few frictions and you might change what you're doing. I say I was the chef and I was the cook, but now the family starting to cook more for themselves anyway, which is great. You know, learning things, but you know, I think it's important that you, you maintain the nucleus of the family and you do the things that you did before carnival. But that's one thing I think can sometimes trip people up is right. Saying, right, I'm the carnival, I'm doing this. If you're not carnival, you do whatever yeah. you want. That can be a big negative and i'd say to people try and reverse that as much as you can but so far being a carnivore has been a blessing for me as a father and a husband yeah when you talk about eating non-carnivore food with the other family members you can still eat a very healthy meal as long as it's whole foods and you have no processed foods you cut seed oils trans fats cut yes. out processed wheats uh, grains and you cut out sugar and yeah. you are basically hitting 85% of the health benefits, I think. You're not getting the Absolutely. carnivore benefits because the carnivore mm. benefits are way above that. But you yeah. are getting the health benefits where you're just getting a healthy meal, which even most keto people don't do that. I didn't. When I was keto, I did not do that. I was eating Quest bars and all this stuff that had maltodextrin and net carbs and all this. I was It was nonsense what I was eating. Yeah. Now, I did Absolutely. lose weight, but it wasn't even close to what I could have achieved. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with that. And then... Being a dad for me, at 57, I have a 14-year-old son because I started late. I didn't get married till I was 40. I had a pretty good run as a single guy. <laughs> and here I am. I'm single again, right? But yeah. uh, being a dad, I know I was a better dad because I was older initially. But now yeah. I'm head and shoulders above where I was perform wow. performing. I just want to be a great dad. And I'm there. And I have so much energy and enthusiasm as about being a dad. And, yeah. you know, that I guess that energy and enthusiasm have been sapped. And it's not there now it's now it's there man i have time i want to interject with him i want to talk to him i want to find out what's yeah. going on in his life and uh, i love it we have a great relationship and he's yeah, a carnivore now and i didn't force him either so what i did was i became carnivore in march and i only had him every other weekend which during the school year that's the deal yeah. so i kept a shelf with his food on it and i threw everything else away and i vowed to just make as healthy of food as i could for him yeah i'm not going to give him garbage absolute garbage every now and then mac and cheese and stuff you know still yeah. some of the stuff he liked but it wasn't like cool. primarily garbage no chips none of that junk and then he saw me heal and he knew i couldn't run i hadn't run since 2017 because i hurt my wow. ankle in the military so 2017 to 2019 my last two years in the army i couldn't even run i did what's called a walking profile for my mm. PT test which you march you do a three mile march at speed instead of running yeah and it still hurt my ankle but i could pass it but again i felt like less of a man less of a soldier because i couldn't you know, maintain the standard and that yeah, I've made yeah. my whole life. And I was an athlete. I played rugby. I played lacrosse. Mm -hmm. I was an athlete all my life. Yeah. And here I was getting fat and losing the standard. 
and he saw me able to go run and sprint and he saw me lose 23 pounds in the first month. Yeah. And he said, dad, do you think uh, you play soccer football? And he had a, a foot injury and he said, do you think it'll heal my foot? I said, I don't know, son, but you could try it. it won't yeah. hurt. So he went and he's like, well, in Jan in July, I get him for a whole month. And he said, well, mm -hmm. in July, let's do it. Let's go hard carnivore. I'm like, fantastic. Let's do it. Wow. So we waited till July, July, we went hundred percent carnivore. And I kind of felt bad to the first day of July. I took him to a pool party with his friends and the parents ordered pizza and he jumped in line to get pizza. And I said, Hey buddy, I said, you know, we're carnivore, right? And he goes, Oh, you're right, dad. Oh. I said, it's okay. You can, <laughs> I said, you can peel a top off or you can start yeah. tomorrow. He goes, Nope, I'm carnivore. He goes, I'm not doing either of those. I'm like, all right, son. And that's the way he is. He's just, he's, but since then he has shaved three minutes off his three mile time, placed PRs in every race he's run. Cause he runs cross country and track too. Yeah, and wow. did his first finish at first top five finish he's ever had and beat guys he's never beat before. And then the last weekend of soccer, the last weekend of the season, they had a tournament. He played three games that weekend and didn't sub out once. Wow. And love he, it, he came to me and said, dad, I don't get tired anymore. And he, he's running fast the whole time. He didn't slough off at all. So, I what's, mean, I can't. Go yeah. ahead. I was going to say, what's the impact with his like his peer group? Are, are they aware that he's on carnival? Because I'm sure that would uh, affect, you know, how people treat him. Yeah, I make carnivore lunches for him. And yeah. I'll grill a burger with cheese on it and cut it in strips and throw it in his thing. And he'll just eat those like finger food. He'll microwave them and eat them. And then uh, bacon in there and cheese slices like a you know hard cheese i put a little and then i put uh, cheese wisps which are fried pure cheese or like crackers but they're pure yeah. cheese or parmesan so yeah. nothing but pure real food and uh, they don't have any problem with that he just eats that but when i see him in a track race where all his and and in soccer when all his mates are carving up at mm. halftime before the game and before the race he's just yeah. drinking water and they're all wow. eating oranges and they're eating all these and he doesn't eat anything. He just eats, he just drinks water. And uh, it, so it, no one gives him a hard time though, because he's performing. In fact, his coach has noticed that he's actually accelerating like rapidly, more rapid development than they expected. Right? Fantastic. So, Fantastic. Um, and he's a kid now. I think it's changed his motivation too, because he goes to school an hour early every day at 7 a.m. Mm. And he runs for an hour before school. And he yeah. didn't have to, that's voluntary. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't that kid. That's dedication. I drive him, yeah. but I wasn't that kid that did that. But he's got such a good role model and uh, that's the powerful stuff about it. It's fantastic to hear. That's part of this too, right? You become a role model that's worth watching, yeah. I think, when you do yeah. this. And uh, because it changes you, that's part of that becoming a man and doing things. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alex, it's not all, uh, it's not all <laughs> you know, easy times when you go carnivore, right? There's still, life still happens. So what are your greatest challenges with carnivore or even outside of carnivore? Yeah, I think... Challenges? When I look back on the, obviously May, it, that was the epiphany moment, but it was when I started ramming it down people's throats, if you pardon the pun. Yeah. And uh, I started to think, oh, what have I done here? I found the uh, golden nugget, but people don't want to know. And uh, so that was a challenge, negative, positive dissonance from myself and also from other people. Uh, as it, it's as if you're trying to sell something to somebody, like when yeah. somebody knocks on your door and you go, yeah, what do you want? And uh, so, that nearly stopped me but as i said i did get support from the family but uh, i didn't get keto flu or any sugar withdrawals because my diet wasn't it was more about the plant-based diet not the sugar for me because I, I i did have a lot of diet coke but um, not actual sugar in my particular foods it was just in the families but i knew that uh, after that first month the, the 99 was positivity and i couldn't think of anything to stop me from doing it I, th I thought the biggest challenge was going to be like the weekly or monthly shopping because I'd go into our yeah. local Aldi. We, I think you have Aldi in the States. We do. And uh, I thought it was pretty decent food. And then all of a sudden I realized most of it down the middle aisles was absolute junk. And uh, so again, I was starting to struggle with how I where to get my food from. Then I found obviously my local butcher, which was great. And again, I think only maybe with the family nucleus of eating together, it caused disruption. I think I can tell other people as well that I started to get a bit obsessed with it. I started to get real. I don't think I've got OCD. I am a Virgo and we are perfectionists, apparently, on the star signs. But me and Michelle are both, both uh, Virgos and you can't have us both in the kitchen at the same time. And we, we could not put an IKEA wardrobe together. We'd kill each other because we're both perfectionists. So I was so blessed that she backed down and she just let me do what I want. And obviously, a couple of months later, I started developing the channel. 
I think the main thing was the family interaction. I started to eat all on my own all the time. Um, the second one was when we went to a couple of social occasions on Father's Day in the UK. I think it's June or July. So that was just a couple of months in 2022. And Alex and Sophie decided to take me for a slap up meal in a, a, a very trendy bohemian part of Liverpool. On the way, they were very quiet and sitting in the back like the king being driven. And I was thinking, oh, this I'm not going to have a drink today. I'm just going to have a really good time with my kids. And so they hadn't touched Carnival, but they knew they'd seen the changes. So we walked into this very trendy restaurant and they had this big, big, massive menu like that. And they were going, they were sitting there like that and they were going, I said, what are you doing? And they go, we're trying to find something for you to eat. And I went, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, if there's something that's going to be plant-based and I know it's not going to kill me today, guys, chill out. But you could see, instead of them really looking forward to it, they were panicking, thinking, Dad, yeah. we're, going to take, we're going to take that out for his meal and he's going to be so disappointed. Well, they had lamb, they had a chatuca, was it chatuchery or chatuca in Spanish? Like, oh my God, all that stuff. It was fantastic. I had, uh, I think I had a, a main shoulder of lamb about that big, mm-hmm. tucked into that. Uh, I said, no veg, no sides, but they still brought it out anyway because they, it's not their fault, but they're thinking, oh my God, the guy's not going to eat anything today. So I didn't eat any veg. And then I had the cheese, I had the, uh, was it the chorizo. I had a great time. I ate more than them. So at the end of the meal that we had a drink and they were like, dad, dad, what a weight off our minds. And I said, guys, this, <laughs> this is not what this should be about. But I just said to them, listen, guys, if I feel like a plate of mushrooms or onions or something, I know that's not going to give me any sort of histamine reactions, which mm. I've, I've looked into like oxalates and lectins, I'm not going to become this sort of like robotic carnival because Life isn't like that. You've got a friend on YouTube and she's called herself Imperfect Carnivore. And right. I said to Sarah, Sarah, we are all imperfect carnivores to a degree. Something will come along and it will knock us off. We've burnt our boats, but sometimes we've got to face the facts that we live in a society and we have to operate that way. So if something comes along and you think, you know what, I am going to have ice cream. It's only going to be one. I'm going to make sure it's the one with the least sugar in. Just go for it, but for God's sake, don't hit yourself over the head because you're going to reject the whole thing. You're going to resent it and you will just not do it. And then the, the why, the why you were doing it becomes irrelevant. And it's, unless it's that big, that obviously makes you a perfect carnivore. I could name one or two carnivores who are, should we say, almost perfect. Yeah, DC but, learning to live. Yeah. Stage four cancer will make you a perfect carnivore. Thanks for saying that because I was struggling yeah. then to think of something that big, but Man, if you've got something like that, you've got Jeff yeah. Prosperous. I've got friends. Uh, I call Carl, who's a swimmer, Carl Barkley. He, when I first met him, sorry, I, when I saw him last June, and he said to me, Alex, what are you doing? Because he was a swimmer, a, a top swimmer, and I was the, the, obviously the teacher on pool side. And he seen me go from 2XL UK size to medium. I hadn't seen him for 12 months. And he, he just stopped in the water and went, Alex, I was like, yeah, <laughs> what, what have you done? I was like, he says, you look like half the man. I, I, he was ge- genuinely complimentary as a guy. And I went, I've gone on a thing called a carnivore diet. So he said, I'll have a chat at the end. Put down. He went on carnivore for three months. And then I said to him, why are you not going to do it anymore? And he goes, crazy pressures. He said, wow, I will tell you. And he doesn't mind me saying this. He's uh, been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Hmm. And uh, he knew that the sugar elements and the you know glucose and all that stuff was obviously the thing that was not helping him at all. So such a blessing to hear him say that. And I think he's still looking at the whole aspect of carnival and he understands the relationship between metabolism. But yeah, I've gone off, I've gone off on the track now, haven't I? Right. But, yeah, getting back to the negativity. To me, it was all about the social aspect and just kicking it off with the family. But as I, I know you've watched some of my videos. If you look at my line diet journey in, in November, I did a 30 day uh, diary. It was a breeze. And I thought it was going to be horrendous. After the first week of being tired all the time, I just ate like a king. I literally did feel like king of the jungle. And uh, so I would say probably 95% of my carnival journey has been a a rousing success. I'm thriving. It's a never ending journey, but I say about 5% is just family and socializing. Yeah. From my biggest drawback or challenge would be dating because it's very hard. Because Absolutely. the three hills people will fight to the death on are politics, religion, and diet, apparently. Yeah. And people are like, well, I don't mind. And I'm like, okay, we go out to dinner. I eat a steak, and that's all I eat. Or we, we can't meet up for coffee because I don't drink coffee. I'll drink water while they drink coffee. It's just, it's weird. I mean, I don't like going out to dinner because their steaks are not as good as mine. They cost 
four times as much at, at least. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it's really a difficult social aspect to date. Uh, so I'm really looking for a carnivore girlfriend, I guess. And it's, yeah. they're not that many yet. So hopefully we'll get one well, down the road. You've got me thinking now, maybe we should design a app, <laughs> a carnivore dating app. Yeah, the app. carnivore dating app. I think Michaela Peterson is starting something like that. Wow, I think amen. she might be. I've, I've heard about it, but yeah. I don't know how far it is. But yeah, that'd be a great idea because uh, I'm sure they have a vegan diet a dating app. They have to. And why not do it? Okay, uh, let's talk about your YouTube channel. So sure. your YouTube channel at Carnivore for Life 65, correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so, so let's talk about uh, why you started that. Yeah, I had a, as, a, as you well know, I'm not very good with the old tech, but I had started a YouTube channel for Alex's little baby Bengal cats during lockdowns. That's the, obviously because all our things are taken away, all our habits and that. I started a YouTube channel and sadly, <laughs> The little thing died after 10 weeks because of a check congenital chest issue. Oh, wow. Sorry. And, that, and if I wasn't depressed then, I was majorly depressed after that because I saw Alex take his little baby kitten into the uh, vet veterinary surgery and help to have it put to sleep. And uh, when you hear another man cry, especially when it's your son, it, it, it breaks your heart, as I'm sure you well know. And uh, so I just, just, I kept the channel, but I think I had 10 subscribers. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at it, and obviously when I spoke to Kerry, I just sent him a messenger message saying, "Hey, how homestead? How I'm already a, um, a channel subscriber because I liked all this. The whole, I've always wanted to live in the country, and so I followed Kerry for months before that anyway. But it wasn't a notification bell thing where I was watching everything. But I watched the, the uh, one he gets nearly two million subscribe uh, views on when he's cleaning out the ash in the, on the homestead." But I'm just fascinated by his channel. And then, so I reached out to him and he said to me, let's get an interview like we're doing tonight. And uh, finished that interview. I was on my mobile phone and I came away and I had that exhilaration. But obviously I've been a carnival for a while. And, and this was like somebody asking me questions like you. And I was like, blah, blah, blah. I just I had to just vomit all over him, yeah. all my excitement. And the guy was just so welcoming like yourself. And I was thinking to myself, I, I need to do this again. I, I really got that buzz and that bug. And I thought, right, I've got to do something about this. I, th I think I'd already started it called Carnival for Life. I'm not too sure. But after that, I said, right, I'm going to do some shorts here because I'm not very confident about being in front of the camera. And also, I didn't know how to do live streams. I'd never heard of StreamYard and so on. My, my camera equipment was horrendous. I've, obviously, I've been buying webcams. I've got me two laptops. And so, it was that thing about the first few months was tumbleweed where nobody listened to me. Understandably, I totally understand that. Like I probably would have dismissed the whole thing. And then I thought, right, what the hell do I do? So I thought I'll make a Powerball video. And I got about 10,000 views, nine to 10,000 views or hits. And I was like, oh my God, this thing works. So it made me take things seriously. And some of the comments I got were her so stupendous, not horrendous. And it was that kind of, that side of me where I, I do like to give, I, I think I am a giver in life for the sake of the giving. My, uh, my step always says to me, never refuse hospitality because you'll offend the person who's trying to give you that hospitality. And that's how I see it in life. If you want to give out, if that person takes that, that that's a blessing to me. So I did a couple of shorts, got some interest that I started to get subscribers and the, the subscriber level went. And I thought, what the hell am I going to do? And so I started mm -hmm. making a couple of videos in the kitchen. They were horrendous. They were absolutely horrendous. But you know what? People were saying to me, Alex, keep it real. You like your accent. I've got lots of uh, US subscribers. Yep. Lots of people I felt were over 50 who were going along the same journey, who just <laughs> didn't want to do anything on YouTube. So I thought, you know what? Stuff this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. It's a new hobby. I'm going to learn some skills. I might meet some new people who are not because I want to meet them, but because I know if they're struggling like me, at least I can tell them what's been happening to me. And obviously my health and mental health have improved even further since I've been doing the, uh, what's it called, the YouTube channel. But I'm so happy with what I'm doing. To, for me to do live streams with groups like yourself, that's something I would never, ever have done two years ago. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm really happy with the channel. And uh, thanks for all your subscription as well. Yeah, I hear the same thing. I started my channel years before, but it was to share home videos from our yeah, family. I digitized from VHS and 18 millimeter to digital and I posted it on YouTube so family mm -hmm. could watch them. And yeah. then I did, I became a drone pilot in 2016. I had some drone videos on there, but it was, I had 
20 subscribers and they were just family and friends. Yeah. And now, and then I just repurposed it on August 7th and that's when I launched my channel. Yeah. And it just took off and just being yourself and being honest and sharing what you think and what you think will help people that, that makes a big difference. So absolutely. But can I just say on that as well, when, I, when your channel first came onto my recommended list, it was your army intro. It was it lace your boots up and put them on. Yep. And I was sitting there going, oh, I like this guy. And then you came <laughs> on and said, hey, hey, hey. And so, you know, the intro was an eye catcher and the hook was it was a hey, hey, hey. I, yep. I just loved it. I'm gushing now, but that was a fantastic <laughs> intro. And then obviously I was telling Michelle, my wife, about it. And she's going, what does he say? And I go, you've got to watch it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. It's just, and that developed too. If you watch my first video, it's just like really robotic and stiff. And I'm just like, yeah. hi, warriors. It's like yeah. super not exciting, no intro video. And yeah. then I saw some of your first videos too, and they were pretty stiff. And you've yeah. gotten a lot better. Now you're just like relaxed. Now you're just like talking to me. Yeah. Like, All right. But, but, but again, you, having a conversation. Yeah. You don't want to go too cool, I think, because I think that will definitely yeah. put people off. And it will put people off who probably want that information to, to yeah. spark them up. So, it, it, it is a balancing act, isn't it? But Don't get said, too I'm, polished, right? Don't do too yeah. much production. For me, anyway. Yeah. Some people can. I think the yeah. primal timeline, he's a polished guy. And he's going to have yeah. polished videos. And, I, and that's good for his style, not mine. Yeah. But Mine's again, more it, like a debrief, a, a, in your face. <laughs> yeah. But I like Pete because he is, when he talks, and he's in, obviously, the forest or the woods, he's got that superb video edit technique, and then he <laughs> just talks real. And the balance is superb. I, I, again, I say I think yours are quite technical, mate. So don't put yourself down. He has great humor in his too. I like his little yes. ads. He does. Very yeah, fun. Yeah, super. Yeah. So, what would you say are your goals now for YouTube channel? I'm sure they're changing from when you started. Yeah. But what would you like your YouTube channel to be, to stand for, to accomplish? When you look back, you see how people's channels grow. The first video I did with Kerry from Homestead How, when he talked about me being nearly 65. I was frothing at the mouth when we got 80,000 views. Now I think we're nearly hitting 190,000 and people are still commenting on it. And I thought to myself, how far can you go on this? How many people can you reach? If there are 8 billion people on this planet, it could be more, could be less. How many people are struggling like me and you and Kerry and all the, the people we see on whatever age group they are, particularly over 50s, how many people can you reach? And so my goals are um, to obviously just keep doing what I'm doing, trying to polish it up a little bit, but making sure I keep it real. Uh, there's only much, so much you can talk about yourself. So I think I'm going to go down the road of live streams more. Um, I like doing interviews like you do, and then I can edit the interview. I can put it's a recording like today. I can always put some pictures on. I'm more relaxed like I am now. I was petrified about the tech going wrong. So I am going to invest in the tech. I did a live stream with uh, Kerry. I think it was the day after so New Year's Day, and I did mention to people that it's been monetized. Now, my channel's been monetized for quite a while, but as I said to you, I'm not a, a worshiper of money. Money is, is a tool, and what I probably will say to my subscribers in the future is, guys, I'm going to invest in more in better technical equipment. I've got a, a Christmas present off Michelle. It's a 4K webcam. It's not that good. I said, what do you want for Christmas? I said, well, world peace. And she goes, yeah, but what do you really want? And I said, well, what about a webcam? And so she was like, yes, at least I can just go on Amazon and buy that for you. And I said, and while, while you're on it, get me some earphones as well. So I am going to develop it. And again, I am uncomfortable talking about the money, the money side of all the monies. But I will be telling people as we go along, if anybody wants to do any super chats yeah. or as it gets bigger with things like ad revenue, I will talk about that to people and I will explain to them that I'm going to develop yeah. the channel and just get it as big as possible. And also ask people to support the Healing Humanity Project. That went really well on Tuesday. I did actually shout out to people. Yeah, please. Yeah. And I, I didn't expect anything, but I thought, let's give it a go. And I was grateful for some of the UK uh, carnivores uh, on, their, on their questions. They actually put a super chat on. And that sparked me up again. I'm not as fearful as I was about talking about money, but I certainly will mention to people that I'm monetized and I, I want to see if that develops. Yeah, I'm monetized too, and uh, but I, it pays for my subscriptions. There are a lot of subscriptions mm. to use editing software, StreamYard, yeah. professional, get 1080p, yeah. get better quality video, you have to pay every month, that's 60 bucks a month, whatever. Yeah. It's 50 bucks here, 40 bucks here, 60 bucks here, it starts adding up. And yeah. my monetization basically covers that and mm. lets me buy things like microphone, camera, lets you, it's not, it's, and compared to my salary, it's pretty, uh, it's a joke. I can go do uh, my business, I can do, uh, yesterday I did a commercial building inspection for about three hours and I made 
d easily double what I make monthly on this channel in one in three hours. It's not real money. It's really just a passion project. And I tell people if they want to support me, they can support and I appreciate it. And I do encourage it and it will go towards the quality of the videos and me being able to make more videos. That's really what it yeah, is. I agree. I think we're both in the same boat. And some of my uh, subscribers have said, Alex, do not apologize to people for this because for example, that camera's over 75 pounds, a laptop side, the more renovated. I've spent hundreds and hundreds of pounds because it is like you, it's a passion project. And I know that what I'm doing is going to change people's lives. It's not because of me, but the message that we all send out there it's not cheap you've got to invest you've got to invest otherwise it's just not, not going to develop at all but as you say passion project and i've got a new hobby as well it's a new hobby for me yeah i wake up every morning early i'm at 4 30 5 o'clock a.m every morning wow. that's just me because i'm military indoctrinated my dog <laughs> does too i feed him at 5 30 but between 4 30 and 5 30 i'm reading emails answering them all and reading all the comments on my youtube channel and answering them all i yeah. don't leave anything unanswered daily and that's like the highlight of my day really it starts yeah, me yeah. off and every now and then there's a little turd that leaves something bad but 99.9 yeah. percent .9 of them are amazing and they, they say things like you've given me the motivation i need to get back on this or whatever and that's amazing I, I all i'm doing is just sharing and making yeah. and it's and uh, that's all you have to do. Sharing is caring. And that's a fact. And if you're not going to make a YouTube video, like I said, support YouTubers like us yeah. and other ones yeah. that are, have a message that you agree with and you think will be valuable because by you sharing this message, maybe this video here, maybe you get this video and not only do you like and subscribe, but you share it on social media and say, hey, look at these guys. Look at these guys yeah. talk about this crazy diet and what happened. That can make a difference in people's lives. And uh, my, my channel is focused on military veterans active duty and mm. first responders because you have a high suicide rate in that community, in our community. Yeah. And I really believe it, a lot of it has to do with the diet, the standard American yeah. diet, the low cholesterol, low fat, low sugar diet pushes that fulcrum over to where mm. when they run into a problem, it's easier to commit suicide than if they had run a standard diet on a healthy diet where they could handle the things much better. So coming off a standard American diet, the difference in my mental health, I'm sure yours mm. was huge, drastic. I can totally handle it. I'm not stressed out like I was. I'm not, it's, mm. it's just crazy. And I, I know because I've been there, I've been to the dark place. I've lost more friends and associates in the military to suicide than to combat, even after 20 years of war, which is yeah, sure. not, not unusual. And mm. so that's my heart. That's what my channel is about. And so I want my channel to hit 25,000 this year. We hit 6,000 New Year's Eve. Mm. I want to hit 25,000, not because it's about me, because it's not, it's because that means we've hit. 25,000 people plus maybe a million views by then. Who knows? Yeah, it will yeah. be well over a million. Actually, we're at 300,000 views now. It'll be over a million views. And that is the goal, right? That's the big goal. And you too. Awesome. And then the other thing is, I want to help people like you. I want to help other YouTubers. I don't compete with you. I don't compete with any. If there's a YouTuber next door that was doing Carnivore, I don't compete mm. with him. Yeah. I don't compete with any of you guys. We're all fighting in the same war. It's like being in the army. You don't compete with the soldier next to you. You compete yeah. with the other side. And Absolutely. the other side is big pharma, big food and government. That's the big, that's the other side. That's what we're competing with. I've said it in my, some of my videos. It's like being in a war and oh, uh, yeah, but I, yeah. we know what we're fighting for. And as I say, it's, I don't want to get controversial or political or whatever, but there's so many other influences and so many things that can distract us, but down the torpedoes, full steam ahead, get those, get those blinkers on. That's how we feel. Now you're quoting American revolutionists. I love it. Yeah, is, yeah. I mean, listen, that's what it was all about back then. And it's still what it's all yeah. about. This is our Boston Tea Party moment, right? Yeah. We're going against what they call the science. So this is, I like to call it our Copernicus Galileo yeah. moment, right? Where we're saying, hey, guess what? The Earth's not the center of the universe. The galaxy doesn't rotate around. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. saying, yes, it does. And we're like, nope, <laughs> look at the science. It doesn't. Yeah. And yeah. we will win be because yeah. we're right. And sooner or later, you have to win. Yeah. The thing about science, though, is that they always say it's settled. I don't agree. I think yeah. si science challenges everything. Absolutely. And at the, mo at the moment, with the medical science, the nutrition science, things are up in the air. And I think the likes of Dr. Chafee, Berry, and Kilt and so on, they, when I say to people, oh, I think they think you're going to say, oh, I watch this YouTube channel, this influence. And they go, no, it's uh, Dr. Chafee. He's a neuro, a no uh, he's not a neurosurgeon. I know that, but he's obviously uh, in that. A resident. Particular. Yeah, he's a resident, not a, not a resident. I've got uh, Dr. Kiltz, uh, I've got uh, Dr. Berry, he's an MD, 
and they think this guy's talking about top professionals here so that's where their cognitive cognitive distance can be rattled a little it just reassures me that as i say we're just on the right road yeah and i've got a scientific background I mean, when i was in the navy when i first joined the military i was on submarines i was a nuclear power plant operator so i went to nuclear power school did a lot mm -hmm. of physics a lot of reactor principles a lot of thermodynamics i did all that i did all, math all the way up physics all the way up all the, and then i did it commercially for several years before i switched into computers and now i'm into wireless which is another physics type mm -hmm. deal i mean you're a wireless engineer it's all physics and yeah. you can't change the laws of physics but here's the deal you're right there's no part of the scientific method there's not one step in the scientific method that says trust the authorities right that's that's yeah. not a sign it's always yeah. come up with a theory test yeah. the theory propose your theory and then yeah. accept all challengers and they have to prove you're wrong yeah, right absolutely. einstein did it that way people still try to challenge his stuff yeah yeah and uh, that's what it is it's a theory that's all it is yeah so true so, so true even carnivore is a theory that's what it is yeah but you know we can see the results so there's so many data points right that uh, it starts looking pretty good it's yeah. looking pretty good for my side yeah absolutely i love it absolutely love it how, pe how can people get in touch with you and uh, follow you? Of course, I would recommend everyone watching this video to follow and like and subscribe to Carnival yeah. for Life 65. But how yeah. else can they get in touch with you, Alex? Yeah, thanks, Larry. Yeah, as you know, I'm probably more confident in the last uh, couple of months than I've been for a long time. I was on Twitter, which is now X, and that's where I started my um, my documenting. I, I quite like Twitter. It's a brutal app, but I went into a, a group called Carnival Diet, so you only had members in that. But uh, that was a good start for me. I've got many, many pictures of all my meals and stuff like that, doing B, 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 and E. I did try Lion Diet for about a week or so, about maybe 12 months ago. So that's documented in there. So if anybody wants to watch, follow me on or look at my stuff on Twitter, it's Alex Cannon. So it's A-L-X without the E and then C-A-N-N-O-N. -N -N. So Alex Cannon. I'm on Instagram. It's Alex Carnivore, lowercase. And uh, Facebook, I've got my own page, obviously, which is private, but I uh, started a Carnival for Life page as well. So that's open to the public and it's only going to have Carnival information on. I actually got booted out of a Carnival Facebook group because I was uh, obviously plugging my channel. I forgot to read the rules, which said, don't plug your channel. So they kicked me out of one and I've joined another two. But I've, I put a couple of New Year's Eve um, stuff out about me and Michelle at, at our wedding party, not our wedding, but a wedding party. And there was a photograph of me and her full length. And I, I've got to say, I was really proud of it because I looked at myself in a suit and I went, I've got quite emotional thinking that was me 30 years ago. And I've got this beauty on my arm in a glitter, glittery suit and Michelle doesn't look 58. And uh, Ali Wells complimented, she's like, you sexy couple. And I was like, yes. And also <laughs> there was uh, Kerry Mann made a little comment as well about being a movie stars. And so it could be evil, easily some students being big headed. It's not about that. It's about putting it out there saying to people, look, if I can do this at 65, you can do it too. So I'm on Facebook, as I say, a carnivore for life, Alex Cannon at Twitter and carnivore was it Alex carnivore in lowercase on Instagram. Great. Yeah. I'll reach out to you on Facebook. I don't know if we're, I don't know if you're following me or if we're following each other, but I'll make sure I check. To, well, that's yeah. what, because I'm not really on Facebook that much. I haven't had time to actually go through that. Now that, now that uh, Ali is following me and stuff like that, I'm getting lots of recommendations from a lot of US uh, carnivores who are yeah. recognized. So I am going to sit down possibly next weekend and probably uh, rent as many as I can. But again, that keeps the momentum going, doesn't it? And I've got a group and you're welcome to share your videos. My group yeah, sure. what DC does and my group is the Carnivore Diet yes. Exchange. And the reason I call it the carnivore diet exchange is it's a forum to exchange ideas about the carnivore diet. So uh, DC's in there. A lot of other guys are YouTubers. I recommend go ahead and post your videos, yeah. man. I want to, like I said, I want to cross pollinate. I want to get people because some <laughs> people may not, they may not connect with me or they may, but maybe you're a better fit. Yeah. So I recommend do that. Yeah. I said so. this on the, on my, I was speaking to the carnivore brothers yesterday. I did a, a live stream with them. Have you spoke to Rhett and Ashley? No, I have not. Brothers, yeah, check them out. Uh, they, they've uh, again great journeys. And I was saying to them that people think, oh, the carnivore diet community is too large now. No, it's not. It hasn't started. No, and I am constantly, every time I find a new carnivore video, I go and I sub it. Even sometimes without looking at the videos, I don't care. I want to get as many reference points as possible. And if I go onto a channel and I just say, I don't like it, it I'm not going to be negative about it. I'm going to say, no, 
that's not my priority at the moment. I'm more interested in maybe like somebody like Laura Spath or whoever. You look at Chris's journey where he's had a lot of uh, an, an operations to remove excess skin from obviously losing all the weight. And that, that's where your little, that thing's the spark you. So I just think the, the, the carnivore community just hasn't started yet, not at all. That's true. I agree with that. Well, hey, man, I'm going to drop you out. We're about an hour. Will you stick around for a second until I say goodbye after I yeah, say sure, goodbye yeah. to our people? Great. That's All right, guys. Once again, another great talk. This is a fantastic guy, Alex. You need to follow him, check his stuff out. And all I got to say is stay strong and overcome. Carnivore Soldier, out.